Welcome to this pre-recorded service for the Sunday before Lent, which is also Valentine's Day, the 14th of February. We hope that you will find this service a means to draw closer to God and to other people of faith. Whether you're joining us for a Zoom gathering on Sunday morning or at any other time, may you be may you be richly blessed by the God who is love. We begin with a moment of quiet as we remember that God is present with us now, wherever we may be. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We sing our opening hymn. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. We say together the words of the Gloria. Glory be to God on in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect for the first Sunday before Lent. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now have our first reading. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. By setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up to a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked round, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. 
As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Whichever of the New Testament Gospels you read, the revelations of the good news of Jesus Christ, it's clear that he was considered by the authorities of the day as a rebel. And indeed, he was executed as a potential insurrectionist. In the conservative way that many of us in the church put across the gospel message, this aspect is often downplayed. I can't recall hearing Jesus described as a rebel in any sermons. In the interchanges between Jesus and his authoritarian critics, his disciples were often caught in the middle. We remember questions to Jesus like, why don't your disciples fast? The disciples must at times have been rather bewildered. They were brought up adhering to religious authority and what it dictated and suddenly they find themselves following someone who is pitting himself against certain aspects of how things were officially being done. The disciples trudged after Jesus on the dusty roads. They were tutored by him. They revered him as master, but they were human. And one can't help but feel that doubts must have crept in from time to time. Indeed, one gospel passage does mention an exodus of some of his followers. Not the twelve, but others. The gospel passage we're thinking about today was, for the benefit of the disciples present, an experience of clarification. In a vision, they saw Jesus talking with Moses and Elijah. Moses representing the Jewish law and Elijah the prophets. The clarification this brought was that Jesus was not merely a wayward rebel like many others at that time, rather he was in line with the authentic Jewish faith. Indeed, more than that, he was transfigured in their sight as the culmination of God's promise to his chosen people. The disciples Jesus knew would need this revelation about him to equip them for what they were to face in the times ahead. Times of persecution and testing. In no way could what they had experienced that day on the mountain mean that they could just go back to how they were before, how things were beforehand, the status quo, if you like. When momentous change occurs, it's as, though, it's as though there's a reset to life's buttons. At the start of this third decade of the 21st century, we are living through a time of resets to previously thought norms. The pandemic is causing and will continue to cause a pause in our national and international lives regarding our interrelationships and values. As I speak, as the vaccination programme is well underway, there's now quite a bit of talk about our hopes of, about being uh, getting back to normal in the summer. We are encouraged to be optimistic about beginning to pick up our lives again where we left off before the pandemic. A great summer, complete with holidays. Whether this is premature or not is not for me to say. But will some of the deeper lessons 
about the malfunctioning areas of our society, a society in which the haves and have-nots are getting further apart. Will these lessons have been learned so that changes can happen? Will those essential workers, for example, continue to be held up as examples of humanity at its best and financially rewarded accordingly? Will our practical attitude to the climate emergency be reassessed? Do we at this point need to be honest with ourselves as a society about our priorities? and what these prior priorities will mean for the future. Many think we do. For many of us, this may also apply on a personal level regarding the direction of our lives. And many are realising they, well, they may have to make future changes to job, to lifestyle and a lot of other things besides. For ourselves as a faith community, changes to how we meet together for worship and socialising mean a great rethink about what is possible. What might be the advantages and disadvantages, for example, of online provision? When lockdown ends, what online aspects might be good to retain? For example, might it point to a, a future uh, might it point a future um, way to a greater outreach? Um, on the consideration of this, perhaps we have to bear in mind that for some people outside the church, people who've never been to church before, merely turning up for a service in the middle of strangers for the first time might well be an insurmountable object even though they might have been spiritually inspired to do so. Watching online might be a way into faith. The church, as an organisation, is also undergoing a radical rethink about allotment of personnel. These and other issues are coming to the fore as a result of change. But just as for the disciples, the implication of what they witnessed when they saw unveiled the true person of Jesus Christ was the beginning of knowledge they would work out for the rest of their lives, so our post-pandemic realisation may be slow to bear fruit, but it will happen. The revelation of Jesus was one of light. The pandemic experience is a revelation of threatening darkness. But the Christian story is about the conquest of light over darkness. Last week, we heard in our gospel reading from the beginning of John's gospel of the reality that darkness can never overcome the light. This Sunday is St. Valentine's Day, when a key word is the light of love. And it is love that brings about the changes that matter. Amen. Let us pray. When I say the words renew our strength and bind up our wounds, please respond with help us to hope in you. God of love, you give power to the faint and strength to the powerless. Many are exhausted, juggling with school at the kitchen table, responding to demands of work or family life, or dealing with isolation, joblessness and fear. We pray for the leaders of our church, encourage and strengthen them in their work, and give us all fresh vision for the future of church and renew our imagination, creativity and wisdom as we address financial and ministerial challenges. Turn us towards each other in acts of loving service, then turn us outwards to carry your gospel of healing into the world. 
renew our strength and bind up our wounds. Help us to hope in you. God of love, you call worlds into being. You number the stars and call us all by name. You created a world of plenty and beauty, of magnificence and diversity. We pray for faithful climate leadership here and across the world. We ask for bold and brave decision making that recognises the crises we are in. The crisis we're in in making decisions, the challenges that face us and our dependence on fossil fuel that works to restore decades of damage from greed and exploitation. God of all creation, you restore the face of the earth. Stir us up to action to protect our planet and may our feet tread lightly on the earth and our actions and priorities bring healing to our battered world. Renew our strength and bind up our wounds. Help us to hope in you. God of love, you restore what is broken and you bring together what has been split apart. Lord, so many countries in our world are in danger not just from climate change, but from the fragile existence of constant political unrest and conflict and compromised leadership. We ask for peace in these dangerous and fragile communities where streets are full of fear. Although our leaders may often fail us, may we trust again that there is a world of possibility where the mistakes of the past can shape a better future. Lord, as COVID vaccinations are rolled out, we are grateful to the scientists that have worked tirelessly and the many now who are ensuring that we are made safe. But Lord, we are only too mindful that again there is an inequality across the world as many countries struggle to buy the vaccine and factories struggle to produce what is needed for a global pandemic. Lord, give wisdom to those who administer the programme and to the World Health Organisation as they seek a fair way forward that needs richer countries to help poorer countries. Renew our strength and bind up our wounds. Help us to hope in you. God of love, you defend the voiceless and we pray for our own country where society is marred by vast inequalities of life chances opportunities and money and where Covid has revealed the vast wealth owned by some and the struggles of others just to make ends meet. Today we pray for people living in flats covered in unsafe cladding who are afraid to sleep at night and do not have the finance to pay. We ask for a just settlement of this crisis and a commitment from our government to ensure this is never repeated. Help us, Lord, to be alert to the pain of others. May we hear the cries of the powerless. And by our words and choices and actions, may we be agents of healing in the world. Renew our strength and bind up our wounds. Help us to hope in you. God of love. You heal the brokenhearted and you gather in all who are lost. And we pray this morning for all who are mourning. Mourning the loss of family members or friends. And we offer to you all who are suffering in mind or body, asking for peace. And for your healing presence to surround them in their need. Send your blessing on all who are afraid or alone and on those whose lives are being destroyed by abuse or violence, and on all for whom home is not a safe place. Renew our strength and bind up our wounds. Help us to hope in you. God of love, your kindness is everlasting. So surround us now with your arms of love. Keep our eyes fixed on you and make us ready to follow where you lead, trusting that you will provide for us today 
and always. We ask these prayers in our Lord's name. Amen. And so we come to the words of the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us therefore pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a peace with those who are around us. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Let us pray. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth, you have spoken your word and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave himself up for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. 
We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of your, our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather the people from the ends of the earth to feast with St. Lawrence, St. Peter, St. Paul and all your saints in the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Body of Christ. Let us pray. God of all trust, may we who confess your faith prove it in our lives with abundant joy, outrageous hope and dependence on nothing but your word alone. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. We don't usually have notices during a pre-recorded service, but we do want to let you know about what Lent and Easter provision we will be able to offer this year. We're not sure yet when we'll be able to reopen, 
but we very much hope that Palm Sunday will be our first day back in church. We've got um, various ideas lined up for that week, which would be a week then Holy Week of online Zoom evening services and services in the different churches in order to allow the required spacing for decontamination in between. Please watch the space for those for more information about Holy Week and Easter. But for now, Lent begins on Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. There will be a morning service live on Zoom, which will use the same Zoom code as the Sunday 10 o'clock service. So if you're watching this on Zoom today with the gathering, just hang on to the code and you can use it again. In the evening on Ash Wednesday, there will be a service of Compline with a reflection that will be on Zoom. There'll be a special code for that. And that code will then carry on for following Wednesdays during Lent, when we'll be holding a short um, Lectio Divina session at half past eight on Wednesday nights, followed by a Compline at nine. Everyone is very welcome to join us during those times. There will also be resources posted online and on our Facebook page and information sent out with the weekly emails. If you're not getting them and you'd like more information, please do get in touch. Thank you. And now we come to the words of blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and all those whom you love, both living and departed, now and always. Amen. We sing our closing hymn.
Let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>